Shadowy billionaires have been secretly buying up thousands of acres of land and they just got caught. And it turns out they want to build a secret utopian mega project city twice the size of San Francisco that'll serve as a blueprint for how we fix all of our housing and economic problems. But there's a lot more to this story. So what's really going on and why all the secrecy? Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is sponsored by Climate Power. We've seen many planned cities pop up around the world in the last couple of decades. Cities like Dubai are great examples of successful city planning and building from the ground up. But there are dozens of awesome projects being built as we speak. Neom, the line in Saudi Arabia, already broke ground. If they ever finish, it'll be a 170 kilometer linear walkable city that's anticipated to house up to 9 million people. In Senegal, a real life Wakanda of 2,000 acres called Akon City is planned for the country's Atlantic coast. Toyota, the world's largest car manufacturer by volume, started construction of Woven City at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan. Both Egypt and Indonesia plan to move their administrative capitals to newly built cities. Egypt is building a new 173,000 acre capital for 7 million residents 45 kilometers from Cairo. Indonesia plans to build its new capital city Nusantara in East Kalimantan in Borneo Island. And notice that all these projects have something in common. They're all overseas. And this got me thinking, why isn't the US doing the same thing? How come all the really cool, awesome mega projects are always happening somewhere else? So when I heard someone was planning that very thing right here in our backyard, I started digging. In 2018, a company called Flannery Associates started by land in Solano County, California. The company was intentionally registered in Delaware, where it doesn't require a corporation's officers to be public, allowing the investors to remain anonymous. The secrecy of their operations and the location of the land next to the most important base in the continental US spawned speculation, conspiracy theories, and concerns about national security. Over the last five years, Flannery Associates brought approximately 400 parcels amounting to 55,000 plus acres of land, roughly the size of Seattle, Washington, or Boise, Idaho, spending around $800 million for an average of $14,500 per acre. This is important and we'll get back to that in a minute. The company went to great lengths to hide who the owners and investors were, but company officers were called in to testify at a California State Senate Agriculture Committee hearing on August 22nd, 2023, so they had no other choice but to come clean eventually. During the hearing, Flannery was accused by U.S. Representative John Garamendi of using secrecy, bullying, and mobster tactics to force generational farm families to sell. It confirmed what most people in Solano already suspected, that Flannery Associates is backed by a group of Silicon Valley billionaires and that they plan to build a futuristic city in Solano. Flannery's parent company, California Forever, great name, is made up of well-known investors, including Jan Sramek, a former Goldman Sachs trader, Mark Anderson, a venture capitalist, Patrick and John Collison, a pair of billionaire entrepreneur siblings who founded the payment platform Stripe, Chris Dixon, general partner of the California-based venture capital firm Anderson Horowitz, John Dewar, a famous California venture capitalist of Kleiner Perkins, Nat Friedman, ex-CEO of GitHub, former chairman of the Gnome Foundation, Foundation and current advisor of MidJourney, the generative AI image generation software. Daniel Gross, an Israeli-born American entrepreneur who co-founded Q and is now a partner of the world's most successful startup accelerator, Y Combinator. Reid Hoffman of LinkedIn, Michael Moritz, former chairman at Sequoia Capital, and Laureen Powell Jobs, Steve Jobs' widow. The company is partnering with a diverse team of experts, architects, designers, and engineers mostly local, to ensure they understand and share the company's vision for Solano County. But what is that vision? To build a new community that attracts new employers, creates good paying local jobs, builds homes in walkable neighborhoods, leads in environmental stewardship, and fuels a growing tax base to serve the county at large. Sounds pretty good. The company also aims to improve schools, promote public safety, reduce homelessness, and invest in infrastructure for transportation, water, and wildfire protection. Solano is a strategic location since it has access to water. It lies right next to Sacramento San Joaquin River Delta, which is the largest freshwater tidal estuary of its kind in the west coast of the Americas. It has low fire risk, lies in the middle of the larger Northern California region. What is it about dark shadow organizations trying to control our lives? There's probably no better example of this than big oil and gas. When you buy a gas car, you're not just making a deal with the car brand. You're entering into a lifelong contract 
with oil companies. It's why I switched to electric four years ago and why I want to tell you about our sponsor this week, Climate Power. It's Drive Electric Week. And after four years of driving an EV, let me show what I've learned. Over 68,000 miles, I've paid approximately 4,000 in charging costs. An equivalent 25 mile per gallon car would have cost nearly 11,000. There's never been a better time to buy an EV and it's why EV sales have tripled and the number of publicly available charging points have grown by 40% since 2021. The Clean Energy Plan includes a $4,000 consumer tax credit for lower and middle income individuals purchasing used EVs with credits up to $7,500 for new ones. Have you seen gas prices lately? It's over $6 here in San Diego. And this recent spike is due to flooding in Libya. Do you want to be at the mercy of factors around the world or plug in your car and charge it at home each night? There's a lot to love and a lot to learn. Get the EV facts you need to join the clean energy future with Climate Power. Text our code 2BIT to 43464 to learn more today. Huge thanks to Climate Power and you for supporting the show. And by the way, before you ask, California Forever hasn't publicly given the city a name yet. So hit pause and sound off in the comments below what your name ideas would be. I'm thinking Townie McTownface is going to be one of them. Can't wait to see that. So we actually reached out to Flannery a few times to ask about this, but we haven't gotten a reply just yet. So that's pretty much what we know about California's secret city. And to be fair, these are early days that they've really just been in the acquisition of land stage. There's still a lot more to be figured out. According to Flounder's CEO, the secrecy was about keeping shut to avoid farmers and other landowners driving up the prices of the land. Of course it was. It makes a lot of sense if you think about it. If you knew that a couple of billionaires whose combined net worth is almost $50 billion and they wanted to buy your land, wouldn't you try to get as much as you could? By the way, Flannery is pretty touchy with land prices. In one moment, Flannery tried to sue a group of farmers for $510 million in damages, alleging the farmers conspired to set a minimum price for their land, $510 million. That's more than half of what they have already spent to buy up all the land that they have. Flannery ultimately lost the lawsuit, but I'd say it was a big red flag. So the question is, did they pay a fair price for the land they bought? Or are they conning people out of their land? According to one report, they paid in some cases double and even triple the land value. But let's do our own assessment. They bought roughly 55,000 acres for 800 million. Here's a map showing the lots they've purchased so far. That's an average price of $14,500 per acre. But is that a fair price? Let's compare. In the US, average prices of land are around $17,151 per acre. In the state of California, the average price is about 50% higher, reaching $24,123 per acre. But let's hone in on the Solano County region. We scraped all the listings in Solano County from three major real estate websites to see how much the land was worth. In the 146 listings, prices are all over the place, ranging from $2,000 or so to over 6 million. But those prices include the construction of the houses, not just the land. But when you only consider farms and lots of about 100 to 180 acres, around the average size of lot that they bought, the average price per acre is $14,256, which is almost exactly what they ended up paying. So, to be fair, I do believe that Flannery in general is paying a fair price for the land, although it boils down to each specific property. There's probably people who made it out big and people who got a little bit ripped off, but they are prepared to pay a lot more if need be. Flannery offers 17 million for a 950 acre lot owned by the Solano County Water Agency, which they declined. Now, assuming they get all the land that they want, they won't have an issue with power since there's plenty of potential for wind generation and solar from the sun. But the biggest issue is water as all Californians know. Most of Solano gets its water from the North Bay Aqueduct, the Solano Project and Puta Creek. The question is, is there enough water to go around? And this depends on how many people will live in Flannery City or whatever they end up calling it. We don't know what the target population is, but let's make an educated guess. According to Representative Garamendi, 25 to 40% of the land Flannery bought is a massive wind farm and 25 to 30% of it is gas fields with hundreds of closed off gas wells. So let's assume that people won't live there. This leaves about 30 to 50% of the land available for housing or about 16,000 to 27,000 acres. Concept art of the city shows mostly two-story townhouses and they want the city to be open and walkable. So we can imagine a population density similar to that of a suburb, which is around 
about 2,000 people per square mile. So the target population would be roughly between 50 and 90,000 people. Using water efficient appliances and fittings, the average American uses around 65 gallons per day of water. So those 50 to 90,000 people would need a minimum of 1.2 billion gallons or 3,600 acre feet of water a year. That would be a 3,600 foot high tower with 200 feet on each side completely filled up with water. One of the biggest problems this project faces though doesn't have anything to do with supplies, infrastructure, power, or water. It has to do with regulation. A 2008 Solano County amendment to its master plan limits urban growth outside of incorporated cities, among other restrictions. This means that building a new city from the ground up needs to be approved by voters. That's why the first thing Flannery and California Forever plan to do is start talking to the locals, trying to win them over. But this highlights a major issue that I see and which I think is at the heart of why the US seems so left behind when it comes to these mega projects. It's all the red tape and bureaucracy that stifles progress. It's not that we haven't had successful planned cities and communities here in the US. Las Vegas shines as one of the most successful cities designed and built from the ground up. But there are multiple other examples, including New York City, San Francisco, Boston, and New Orleans, to name a few. But most of these cities were planned hundreds of years ago when there weren't so many obstacles in the way. There were other more modern futuristic concepts for city designs like the idea of arcology. Arcology is all about combining architecture with ecology to design cities and buildings that behave just like living organisms. If you ever played SimCity as a kid and reached over 58,000 residents, you probably remember those huge buildings that look like rocket ships that shot up into the sky that could hold over 65,000 people. But this isn't just science fiction and concept art. There have been several projects attempting to create this type of sustainable building and community, the most famous of which is Arcosanti in Arizona, the world's first prototype arcology. It was designed by the father of arcology itself, Paolo Soleri, in 1970. Granted, it doesn't look anything like the futuristic buildings in SimCity, but it does an amazing job of blending in with the Arizona natural habitat. An approach that looks much more sci-fi is the concept megacity New Orleans Arcology Habitat, or NOAA. It's a massive 30 million square foot open pyramid shaped floating building that would house 40,000 people off the coast of New Orleans in the Mississippi River. If there was ever a cooler concept building than the Burj Al Arab, it would be this one. So why was it never built? Well, some possible reasons include the project was too ambitious and costly. The estimated budget for the project was $5 billion, which would require a lot of funding from public and private sources. The project also faced technical and engineering challenges to ensure stability and safety for the floating structure. But overall, the project lacked the support of the local community and authorities. Then there's my personal favorite, the Minnesota Experimental City, or MXC. This was to be a 60,000 acre, partially domed city for 250,000 residents, planned in Aitken County, Minnesota. It was the brainchild of Athelstan Spellhouse, coolest name of all time, who was dean at the time of the Institute of Technology at the University of Minnesota. World-renowned architect Buckminster Fuller was on the advisory board of MXC and was the reason the city design included a massive climate-controlled geodesic dome. He's kind of famous for this sort of thing. Some of the cool features of the city were waterless toilets. I don't know how I feel about that. I kind of like water-full toilets, I think, but... I don't know, maybe it'll work. A novel education system with no schools. It would rely on lifelong learning where everyone learns from everyone else. Okay, and no cars. Okay, that's interesting. And in the case of MXC, they had the money. They had approvals. They were close to actually building, but a lot of locals protested the project and it was shuttered. Kind of explains why Flannery might want to keep a tight lip about the new city plans for California until the very last possible minute. This also explains why the US has been trailing behind the rest of the world in these kinds of projects. They're either faced with insufferable red tape at every turn, or they end up hitting funding issues, or at the very least, a not in my backyard attitude from angry locals who understandably dislike change and have a deep rooted mistrust of the rich and powerful, or the government, or both, and I can't blame them. There's a reason why a project like the line would only ever be remotely considered in a country with a strongly authoritarian government that doesn't have to ask for permission or to be held accountable for the money that it spends. But it's not all bad. We don't know exactly what Flannery Associates has in store for Solano, but they plan to be very open about it from now on. They have to because, well, there's going to be a vote. And there are other planned cities waiting to start construction in the US. The most ambitious by far is Tolosa, which will cost approximately $400 billion and will house 5 million residents in 150,000 acres, roughly the size of Chicago. If they raise the funds, it'll break ground somewhere in the 2030s. The exact location is undisclosed, 
but it'll be in the southwest deserts of the US, either Arizona, Nevada, or Utah. The city will be designed by Bjark Ingels, who also happens to be one of the people behind the design of the line in Saudi Arabia. Ultimately, what this comes down to is there's some good and some bad. Obviously, a little bit of distrust is a good thing when it comes to billionaires buying up land and all the power structures at play. Because I think from the comments I've seen of my videos of late, there's a general distrust in the ethos around the world, and probably for good reason. There's been a lot of talk of 15-minute cities where people actually think that the government is going to force you to move to places that are all don't need cars. You can all walk around and, and kind of control you or something. Now, I don't know where that idea comes from. I do believe you'll have the choice, right? If there's a new cool walkable city, you have the choice to move there or not. But I think that choice would be a good thing. I think it would be cool to see new reimagined cities from the ground up, well planned out with good infrastructure to make it easy to get around and to keep costs down. Because right now, everywhere you go, you got to drive your car, right? In the US anyway, which means you need to pay for parking everywhere. Every shop needs its own parking lot. You have to pay for all this stuff. And it comes at great cost because more and more of our land, which could be used for more housing, is used for parking lots, right? This is in a way a clean sheet design approach to cities. And I love that for cars and airplanes. Well, why not for cities too? I am in favor of it. And I think the key thing to remember is that it would be optional. Nobody is making you move into these places. We're not cattle being led to the slaughter, if you will. Anyway, it's interesting. And I'd love to know what you guys think. Okay. Now, if you thought that was cool, you got to check out this video next. And until next week, I'm Ricky with Tupa Da Vinci. Thank you so much for watching.